when it comes to videos that you create, what it what in math do you find to be particularly hard? Is there a subsection that is easy to other people, but somehow just uh, an agonizing to you? I I always have a hard time putting together a video about probability, and I I actually don't know why. Um, it's not it's not because the material is harder per se. Um, I think it's just that there's like so many different ways that people seem to be coming at it from and like different priors that people have um, or different uh, constructs that would be more helpful to them. And there's other topics where I think, okay, this way of viewing it pretty universally, I think people will like. Um, and just, I, I always have the hardest time if I'm putting together a script on something about probability thinking like, ah, should I say it this way? Well, someone might prefer to see it that way. Well, it kind of depends on if they're thinking of it as someone coming in from machine learning or if they're coming in from physics or are they just thinking of like counting problems? Like it, it always, um, that it always has this uncomfortable multiplicity. So even if the subject matter isn't like deeply challenging expositorily, it's actually for me like very challenging, which is why I make so many promises that I don't follow through on with respect to <laughs> <laughs> certain probability videos. You were talking about, the experience that your viewer is going to have and how with probability it's hard because people come at the video from such a medley of perspectives and that leads me to my question do you consciously get feedback do you have a process of getting feedback from the YouTube comments, do you have a process from before you publish a video, like you send videos to people? How do you actually develop that intuition that is so easy for a teacher who's just speaking to an audience in a classroom? You can tell when Jane in the back is bored or Billy in the front is enthralled with what you're saying. How do you build that intuition if you're creating digitally? Even for the teacher, I think it's hard because unless you're doing something one-on-one, -on -one, it's hard to know. Let's say you can tell that a student's bored. It's hard to know why. Uh, mm. It might have nothing to do with your lesson. It might be because they didn't get enough sleep. Or if it has something to do with your lesson, you don't know what. So I think one-on-one, uh, -on -one, either conversations or sample lessons um, in the ideation phase are important. Um, I always, uh, yeah, I always feel good when I do that. Um, the less I do it, the, the, I just, just do it more. However much I'm doing, like sample lessons preceding a video, it's not enough, I think. Um, so what are those sample lessons like? Are they in person? Are they virtual? Talk about those. In person, if possible. These days, that's harder. But even still, like at, at the loosest, it can be if you're just like chatting on the phone with someone, um, though it's harder without visual cues. Um, but yeah, I've had times when I'll just have like a very basic overhead camera thing to do it virtually and like scribble something. Um, but uh, what you want is to kind of explain something and then get an instinct for what excites the person, what confuses them. Um, what perspectives resonated most and just like really uh iterate based on that like i said wow i, I don't That's, think i do it enough but you know this is really interesting i think you're surprised by how i'm surprised by this but i expected the answer to be no but it's interesting because when i teach my writing students we have an acronym called crips and so in all moments of feedback everyone looks for things that are confusing repeated insightful boring and surprising mm. and you said two of those and it just makes me think that there's something fundamental about the things that you're looking for when you're trying to teach